I'd like to welcome you to this short video about ALS, the Ice Bucket Challenge, and the Bel Air family. My name is Craig Bel Air, and we are the Bel Airs, and we are ALS. Even though 95% of all ALS cases are sporadic, which quite simply means that it doesn't run in the family, and when somebody has been diagnosed, they probably have not had a family member before them who's had ALS. There is, however, 5% of the ALS community that is hereditary, and my family happens to fall into that group. We have what is defined as A4B SOD1 gene mutation. With that particular type of ALS comes a 100% guarantee that if you have inherited that gene, you will eventually get ALS. The exclusion, of course, is if somebody happened to die before the ALS had a chance to kick in. Uh, basically, what that means in layman's terms, so to speak, is most ALS does not run in a family. Uh, our particular case does run in a family and is hereditary. And in short, uh, if one of your family members happens to have it and or die from it, chances are 50-50 from your mom or your dad, you're going to get it too. Uh, flip a coin. You never know. So hi, my name's Melissa. Um, this particular strain of ALS is one of the more aggressive versions. We have lost family members um, in as little as six weeks. And that was my father, Richard. Um, we also um, have an average time frame of two to three months. And the longest time frame has been eight months from diagnosis to death. Um, in addition, our ALS and our strand, the average age to die or to get the disease is around 46. The youngest person in our family was about 42. Um, there's no treatment, there's no cure for ALS. My name is Tammy. I, as well as two other family members, participate in a research project to help find a cure. We feel it is important not only for us, but for our kids, our grandkids. The cure may not come in our lifetime, but we hope to have a cure for them. Currently, the way that ALS patients are diagnosed is an extremely painful process. Not because the test itself normally is, but because of the fact that once the muscles in the body start breaking down to the extent that they can be identified as an ALS patient, then that particular test is extremely painful. So therefore, we're trying to find other ways to test those patients so that even though they're experience probably the most horrific disease in their life, they don't also have to endure an incredibly painful test. In just a few days, I will be traveling to Miami to participate in that project, and we're determined to find a cure for our children, for our family members, and for the rest of the ALS community. My death sentence came when um, my dad died. The reason that is, is that's when I feel like I died, was in 2006. Um, knowing that my dad got ALS, that's when I knew that um, I had a chance of having it. And that's when I chose to get tested. But I guess you could look at a blessing or a curse if you had the A4B gene. Because the lucky part is, is you don't have to suffer for very long. The unlucky part is, you still get to suffer. Wow, the death sentence. Well, as the oldest grandson in the Bel Air family, I can tell you we pretty much take it with uh, a little bit of light heart. We know our destiny and we know where we're going when we die. Uh, you know, we're all Christians, which makes it uh, nice to be assured that we know where we're going. But, you know, we also take it with a little bit of humor. I uh, believe the death rate in America is 100%, so uh, that doesn't deny the fact that the process of dying is tough. Uh, with ALS, you actually just suffocate to death in your home, in front of your family, in front of your children. That's how you die. My brother told you kind of a little more simply, just put it plainly, it's a flip of the coin. You get it and you don't. But like Craig said, everybody's got 100% chance of dying. 
the way I look at it, it seems that just last year, um, in September, my dad was diagnosed with ALS. October 3rd, he died. So it was a matter of just a few weeks from diagnosis to death. And um, the cool thing was, is my dad's outlook on this was he had hope. He knew who he trusted. He trusted in God and Jesus as his savior. And he knew that God had a perfect plan for his life and he knew that through this God would use it. And that's the way I look at it is God is in control of everything. He's controlled the weather, the government, everything that goes on in our lives. There is a purpose and a plan. So I'm just curious which one of you that is going to be touched from this video from our family and what God plans on using in your life. Challenge the rest of you relatives. Here we go. Oh my. ALS, we need funding. I challenge you. You guys ready? Yeah! Do it! To those of you who have participated in this challenge by making donations, we want to say thank you with all of our heart. Without the donations that all of you have made, we would not be able to find a cure. And I know in my lifetime, I have not seen ALS come to the forefront like it has with this challenge. And I don't know whose idea it was, but it was an incredible idea because it is a rose awareness for this disease that sometimes seems to be absolutely forgotten along with the people who have this and die from it and the families who are affected by it. To those of you who posted videos online sharing your challenge, we also want to thank you. Seeing all of you stand up and stand beside us in our fight against ALS has brought us hope that we will find a cure for the generations that follow us, even if we can't find a, gen a cure for the generation that we currently exist in right now. To those of you who have lost a family member, we understand, and we're so sorry that right now we cannot offer you a cure. We wish there was one out there, and we will find one. But unfortunately, it's not today. To those of you who live in a family who carries a gene that is hereditary, who have lost multiple family members, our hearts go out to you. We know what it's like to lose family member after family member. And this disease needs to be stopped. But I want you to know this, that your family is not alone. When we travel to Miami as part of this research, your family goes with us in our hearts and in our mind. Because we're not there just to find a cure for us and our family. We're here to find a cure for your family as well, in addition to the entire ALS community. So, as we pick up this challenge, we want to remember all of those that we've lost. We want to remember Edwin and George and my grandmother Elsie, and William, and Patty, and my dear father, who I loved greatly, Max. We want to remember Richard, we want to remember Jim, and we want to remember Jack. So we take up this challenge 
because we are determined to find a cure to ALS for all of your families and for ours as well. So I challenge all of you who have seen this video, please take the time to find out what ALS is and how it affects a family. And again, we thank you so much for your participation in this challenge, whatever level it's been. If it's been donations or just simply posting a video that maybe somebody else has seen and taken the time to recognize those people who are dealing with ALS and will continue to deal with ALS. We thank you so much.